A very warm welcome to IDFC First Bank Presents, Leaders of Tomorrow Season 12. I'm Ritwika Gupta and you're tuning in to our festive special lineup. Tonight, the focus is on the food industry in India because we all know that food and festivities go hand in hand. I'll be in an exclusive conversation with celebrity chef, actor and entrepreneur Ranveer Brar who will tell us what India is eating and indulging in this festive season. Listen in. Ranveer, it's a pleasure to have you on ET Now, Leaders of Tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, I was, I was looking forward to having a conversation with you. I'm so glad to be here. Great. And we are having this conversation, you know, in line with our festive special uh, week. And the first question I would actually like to ask you is, you know, what are the opportunities do you see in India's food industry? Um, you know, how do you see the landscape in totality? You know, what can you tell us? So I think, you know, when we talk of the festive season, uh, whether we like it or not, India's food industry is technically built around the festive season. Absolutely. You know, uh, everybody holds on to the budgets uh, till the festive season. Um, the appliance market, uh, the the uh, sweets market, a lot of the snack market uh, mm -hmm. does 40% of the annual sales in, in yeah. this period, in this festive season. So, uh, you know, we're always very excited. There's a certain, there's a certain uh, you know, tailwind that you catch uh, September onwards and uh, I think overall uh, the genre uh, in terms of the food genre and everything surrounding it yeah. uh, whether it is uh, the food influencer, food appliance, food ingredients, dishes, restaurants, banqueting, the whole, mm -hmm. uh, the whole paraphernalia around food. I think this is the time it gets a good, good boost yeah. uh, but also it is a time when you sort of see us not being ready for it every year, mm. you know, which is, which is, uh, which is maybe at some point in time a need for more consistency throughout the year, because uh, your sort of your pipeline is not trained and designed to suddenly handle this much workload over a month. Sure, um, I can definitely say that for uh, for a lot of ready to eat. I can definitely say that for a lot of uh, restaurants. Sometimes the fight is to just put stuff out there because there are takers. Are there certain hottest trends, you know, that you're looking forward to for the festive season? What is India eating and indulging in? I think this uh, festive season, there's a big thrust, I feel, as I see on dry fruits. Uh, there's a big thrust on low sugar sweets mm -hmm. rather than no sugar sweets, okay. uh, jaggery-based sweets, natural sugar-based sweets, uh, unprocessed sugar-based sweets, mm -hmm. and fruit based desserts or fruit based sweets. So I think we are getting conscious of um, the sugar that we consume mm -hmm. and we are moving on to more natural unprocessed forms of sugar using fruit as a form of sugar, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, I see a lot of thrust going back towards Indian sweets. You know, for, for the longest, there used to be these desserts that used to give out in Diwali and you know, the Western adaptation of an Indian Mithai uh, this year, I don't see that happening. I see a big thrust on mithai khate, kam khate, right? So I think that uh, is very, very important. Mm -hmm. That is very important for us. Our festivals cannot be celebrated with Western desserts. You know, you need the Indianness to be there through and through. Uh, so that's one uh, thing that I see, which is fantastic. The other bit, like I said, dry fruits. The stress on dry fruits. One, because you know, we know micronutrients are great for us and this whole space we understand that dry fruits are good for us and they're a good space to gift and uh, get. Mm -hmm. So that bit I think is, is, is beautiful. Dehydrated fruits is another opportunity this uh, festive season. That's again becoming huge, like I said, fruit sugars, unprocessed sugars. So you'll see a lot of dehydrated prunes, dehydrated apricots, a lot of dehydrated fruit market. Uh, go, going really, really well uh, this festive season. Rami, tell me, you know, for some, cooking is a chore and for others, cooking is an art. What does cooking mean to you personally? What does food mean to you personally? For me, I think at, at a personal, at an individual level, it's expression. You know, it's my window to the world. You know, 
that's how I see the world and that's how I sort of speak to the world. So uh, that is, yeah, personally, if I would sort of narrow this down to what has not changed, this relationship uh, between food and me has not changed. Fantastic. And, you know, our show is about entrepreneurship. Um, what advice would you have for budding entrepreneurs in the food industry, you know, who are looking to make a mark? Is there a checklist they should be following? I think, uh, yeah, I always say if you're a startup or if you're a budding entrepreneur, um, the first checklist is don't over believe in your product. Okay. You know, the, India is such a huge market mm -hmm. that there is a market for every product. Sometimes we just go so product forward, the product market fitment doesn't really set in and then we realize that maybe we were ahead of time mm -hmm. or we launched at the wrong place. You know, understand the market. It's really, really important. Mm -hmm. We are a beautiful market which has many of these micro markets inside it. Start at the place where you're meant to be. That is one. Uh, the second bit I say is, while food business is like the flip of a coin, you know, yeah. Sometimes uh, you really don't know why, why people queue up. Sometimes you really don't know when the restaurant's completely empty or food business doesn't work. But still, uh, whether it is working or not working, it is still about persevering through the first two years. And what about when it comes to scaling? Um, because I understand in the food industry, you need to re you know, reinvent and you need to innovate. Um, what is your mantra for innovation? Keeping it simple. You know, the only way to scale and innovate is whatever you're doing. You just need to keep it simple. We just launched a, a restaurant in Dubai a year ago. We're opening two more. And my, my diktat to myself and then to the team was, if you can't do it for 700 people a day, yeah. don't do it. You know, and that can only be achieved if you keep things simple. And not just the product, the communication, right? The projection of the business. Uh, the, 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 the flow of the concept. The simpler it is, you know, the easier it is for you to grow. So given your experience in the culinary world as well as now, you know, you're an entrepreneur as well. Um, tell me, you know, since the f uh, food industry is evolving so rapidly, what role do you see technology playing? I think 70% of the role is going to be played by technology. Yeah. Uh, whether it is us reaching to the consumer or the consumer getting to us in terms of insights, in terms of feedback or whatever that is. I think, um, like I said, you know, it is not just about the product, right? It's then about fitting the product in the right market. And the sense of the market, there is no better friend than the technology to sense and understand that market for any food person, you know? I always say there was a time when there was food and tech, but now, you know, you could say you were a food guy and a tech guy, now th there is no food guy and a tech guy. You have to be both. And that's, uh, that's the only way to go ahead. If you don't love your numbers, and if you don't like analytics, and if you don't like mm -hmm. technology, you know, you should, you should start liking it. And apart from technology, is there something that you are particularly excited about, you know, that may impact the future of food, especially uh, the scene here in India? I, I'm very excited to see where we are going to take the plant-based uh, food concepts in India. You know, for the longest, I, I honestly didn't even give them this much chance. Mm. Because we are anyways a primarily vegetarian society, we anyways eat a lot of plant-based food. Unlike the West where it's genuinely a lifestyle change, for us it's a, it's a minor alteration to, to how we eat. And yet the, the concept is done well. Uh, you know, people have embraced the idea of plant-based food and veganism as a lifestyle. So I'm very, very curious as an observer sitting back to see how India navigates this idea of responsible, plant-based, vegan, sustainable, uh, you know, yeah, how, how that happens. And um, during the festive season, is there a particular dish that you can't resist? I think everybody has to have one kaju katli when it's Diwali, you know. I call it the, I call it the victory of the marketing gurus, how kaju katli got, got associated uh, with Diwali. But I think it's just how it is, one kaju katli. Kaju katli is the winner. For, yeah, <laughs> kaju katli is the winner. Well done. It's time for a quick break here. We'll be back shortly. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to IDFC First Bank Presents, Leaders of Tomorrow Season 12. As part of our festive special episode, we are in conversation tonight with celebrity chef, actor and entrepreneur Ranveer Brar. Listen in. Now, Ranveer, you have also now transitioned to becoming an actor. How are you donning so many hats and multitasking so many roles? You know, how are you really, what, what does a day in your life look like? So, I, 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 you know, a lot of people call it a transition. I think it's an evolution. I think all of us, uh, when we have been in a profession for 30 years, have been cooking for 30 years, it becomes us. And cooking is like, you know, swimming or cycling. Yeah. Once you've learned it, you can't unlearn it, right? So that becomes you. So I'm a chef. I, I will be cooking for life. How do I evolve mm -hmm. beyond that? How do, I, how do I translate my expression to beyond food? And that's how I look at acting. How does my day look like? It's, it's, uh, I wish I knew a formula to it. Right. You know, um, the thing is, I'm, uh, because I'm in the chaos, it doesn't seem so chaotic. Sometimes when you try and zoom out, mm -hmm. then you feel chaotic and you feel anxious about it. So my formula is very simple. You sort of sit in the car and drive and only look for the next five, seven meters. It's like driving in, in the Delhi fog, you know. Don't think too much. Just just negotiate what's in front of you. Right. Uh, I think that's that's how I do it, and I I personally believe that's how a lot of us um, should do it. You know, especially the 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 young influencers of today who are trying to do too many things, don too many hats. It can get overwhelming. Right. You know, so one window at a time. So, you know, we spoke about the opportunities. Um, now I want to talk about the challenges as well. Um, tell me, what are some of the challenges in the food business today? What should entrepreneurs, you know, watching our show today take note of? I think if I had to sort of, again, you know, I, I like the matrix of the three. So, but if I had to stratify it into three spaces, mm -hmm. I'd say the, one of the biggest challenges that we face is the size of the market. Okay. Right? We, we tend to get lost because unfortunately a lot of Western vocabulary drives mm -hmm. how we think. You know, they are lost in 1.4, 1.5 billion. Sometimes we also tend to get lost in 1.5 billion. You know, India has so many 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 million markets that you can deal with. I think it's getting lost with the size of the market is one mistake okay. and that food, food businesses uh, sort of do. Second is not finding a balance between right people and right technology. You know, some, sometimes a lot of tech forward entrepreneurs get into the food business and they want to replace um, a lot of people with technology. Sometimes a lot of, you know, conventional uh, entrepreneurs get into the business. And so I think the balance between we need to understand this business is a hands on business. Right. You know, eventually the one who's cooking is, has a lot of power and there are people you can replace. There are people you can't. So I think that navigating that tech versus manpower. Uh, scenario is important. And the third bit I think that food businesses should look out for is differentiating between what is transient in terms of trends and what is going to stay. You know, so I always say uh, a memory stays, nostalgia stays. Usually the wows are transient, right? Because it's a wow and then you forget all about it and then you move on to the next thing. So emotions, deeper emotions, and is your product invoking a deeper emotion? I think it's very, very important. Otherwise, in the world of social media, as food businesses, we tend to get lost in the transient emotions that don't last for long, and then we base a product based on that. And by the time the product comes out, the, the trend's gone. Right. And say, when we talk about education, you know, in the culinary space in India, um, where do you think we stand, you know, at the moment? Um, for students in the hospitality schools, there are a number of schools here, but do you think um, it matches up to what is offered on the global stage? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think both in terms of talent mm -hmm. and in terms of the education we provide, um, we, are right, we are right up there. Can we attract um, more, more and smarter and, and more brilliant talent? Of course. But then that's true for everybody. Yeah. But currently, the infrastructure that we have for culinary education, hospitality education, both via policy as in both what the government provides and with private players, I think... Um, it is it is world class, and I am I'm I'm very hopeful. I'm very hopeful that, you know, I always tell people that we are probably not even Sunil Gavaskar's of of the food industry. The Virat Kohli's are yet to come, right? And we're setting up for it, and the infrastructure is ready for it. 
Fantastic. Um, Ranveer, our show is called Leaders of Tomorrow and I always ask my guest, um, what does leadership mean to them? What does being a leader mean to you? I think being a leader uh, means simplifying to me, right? Uh, a lot of things get thrown at you. You know, the job of a leader is to simplify it, first in his head, and second for people who look up to him, right? And then take everybody forward. Um, in today's world, simplification is such an important necessity because, like I said, so many things get thrown at everybody from so many sides. Sometimes you, you tend to lose your way, you know. And as a leader, you're supposed to just clear things up, simplify, and take everybody together. Fantastic. And, you know, our uh, theme for the show this season is powering entrepreneurs for the global stage. And I want to know from you, you know, um, how can, you know, um, entrepreneurs or Indian chefs, you know, in India, you know, make a mark on the global stage? What can we do to actually make a presence felt, make our presence felt internationally? You need to believe shamelessly. You know, that's what I say. A lot of times because, you know, we are, um, we are too nice as Indians. We yeah, like you to think sort so? <laughs> of, yeah, you know, we, we like, oh, why should we make a noise about it? No, you need, to, you need to be shameless about what you're doing. You need to believe shamelessly. You need to project shamelessly. You need to believe that you're, you're as good as anybody else mm -hmm. um, standing or sitting next to you. And that is true. So let me tell us, um, you know, with the whole Make in India drive, you know, with the government wanting to actually put India on the global stage, how has that reflected or how are you representing, you know, it, you know, in the food scene, in the food market? You know, I have to say this. I, um, maybe, maybe some of it has to do with COVID, but a lot of it has to do with the, the government's policies and the government's social media projection okay. on its stress and the beauty of being Indian. This India rising, India shining, mm -hmm. uh, and India being acknowledged in the world has brought about a sense of prow pride in your roots, right? And like I said, maybe it is a little bit of COVID when we all went back and said, okay, what do we really eat? Where are we really from? But you see a lot of micro cuisine based restaurants coming up. You see a lot of hyper regional um, culinary conversations coming up. You see a lot of provenance based products making it big. You know, you see a lot of people, uh, and it's not just the, the, the mechanics you buy. Mm -hmm. Today, for example, coffee, right? Indian coffee, Chikmangalur coffee or Kur coffee is a hot topic of conversation, not just in the marketing circles, but also with the numbers that they're going. We are going out and looking for what's our own. The consumers are more aware of what our country has to provide. Mm -hmm. In terms of dishes, restaurants, like I said, hyper-local, hyper-regional, um, there are restaurants coming up that are based on cuisine of a certain village in Kerala, right. right? So that's how deep we are going when it comes to rediscovering ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a funneled effect from the sense of pride that one, the policy and its projection has given us, mm -hmm. two, the COVID has given us, sure. right? When you, when you had to call your mom and when you had to really remember what your grandmother used to cook for you, this is a different India and it's expressing itself through food. But tell me something, say for example Starbucks, you know, that has really made uh, coffee global, you know, Starbucks is everywhere. Do you see a brand coming out of India, you know, that will be probably known globally as well? I, I, I love what Third Wave is doing. I love what they're doing. And you know, the good thing is Starbucks, because they've come with Tata, they, have, they use a lot of Indian coffee. Yeah. They use a lot of coffee from Kurk. Uh, they use a lot of Tata coffee coffee. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I think, uh, I think that is a victory in itself. When you have foreign brands come set up and then use our ingredients and highlight them mm -hmm. uh, and then take them back uh, with them. So I think, uh, yeah, no, I think this is a, it's an assertive India that's expressing itself beautifully through food. And one last question. Um, what do you think is the role of smaller businesses, you know, your perhaps, you know, locally sourced uh, ingredients, you know, from farmers, you know, what do you think their role is in the overall ecosystem? I think over the last few years, again, the idea of food and giving, mm -hmm. right, has, has so beautifully cemented right. uh, in, our, in our heads. We all saw what food could do in COVID and how you could just donate meals and make a difference. So a lot of 
food people want to connect to these small businesses that actually give, that actually you know, are cutting away uh, the, the mediator to actually give to uh, the person at the source. Mm -hmm. And that, like I said, that's not a trend. That's an emotion that's deep-seated, mm -hmm. which is here to stay. So any small business which is, which is rooted to source, any small business which comes from a space of sustainability and honesty is going to do well. And it's not going to stay small for long. Wonderful. Well, it was lovely chatting with you, Ranveer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. With that, it's a wrap on this episode of IDFC First Bank Presents, Leaders of Tomorrow Season 12. Tomorrow we'll be bringing you an exclusive conversation on India's logistics sector with Mahindra Logistics. Don't miss it. Wishing you all a wonderful Diwali. Thank you for watching today's episode. Good night.